Hi, thanks for joining us. Uh, today we're going to talk about our IBC 2022 news and updates. Uh, lots of good stuff to go over. I'm Nick Rashby, the president of AJ, and this is Tim Walker, our senior product manager, and it's really exciting that he's here because one of the big products we're talking about today is actually his baby. So uh, it's nice to have him here and he can fill in a lot of uh, logic holes that uh, I, and questions that I might have. So thanks, Tim, for being here. Yeah, thanks for having me. So it's exciting to be back at IBC. This is going to be the first time since the beginning of pandemic that uh, AJA is back at a major trade show in a substantial way. So we're extremely excited and really looking forward to it. Um, wow, is it next week already that it starts? Uh, life moves fast, but as we all know. So our first bit of news today is around Helo Plus, which is a really great device that we introduced at NAB that is the successor to the Helo. Um, and it offers some major new features like dual encoders and built-in graphics and all kinds of really great stuff that uh, was based on customer feedback over the years from the extremely successful Helo. And the news today is that it's available now. So go ahead and order it and you'll get it. Uh, another great piece of news we have is around the Discover Media Edition software that we introduced uh, last year. And it's a very advanced data management software that runs on uh, a really nice uh, web UI that in its function is to index and really deeply understand your files and media assets, regardless of where they are, if they're on-prem, if they're in the cloud. Um, and Discover has been uh, a very w warmly received the media edition. And because it's just designed for ease of use, but it offers an incredible amount of data to uh, various stakeholders in a production environment. So our news today is we have a new partner integration with our friends at LucidLink. And LucidLink is a company that creates object-based cloud storage management tools and allows you to share and collaborate directly from the cloud. And so now it can be another location. All of the LucidLink connected storage, um, uh, object storage environments are now easily indexable by Discover Media Edition along with other cloud services and on-prem storage. So really anywhere your data lives, Discover Media Edition can see it. So this new integration with LucidLink is really exciting and adds to a growing list of partner integrations that we have, including our friends at Telestream and Zytec as well. Um, so Discover Media Edition just keeps getting more powerful and more powerful. So pretty excited about that. Very excited. So we're gonna spend some time talking about two problems and a solution that we've created for it. Um, managing an accurate color pipeline on professional productions from camera all the way through delivery can be a little bit tricky. And the same could be said, it can be tricky in a live environment to deliver multiple SDR, HDR formats in a live environment that can be complex and potentially expensive as well. So Tim and his friends in our engineering group uh, created a very exciting new product called Colorbox. And Colorbox is a little box that does color. It <laughs> does inline HDR, SDR, algorithmic, and LUT color transforms. And we're going to get very deep into its functionality and some of the, the uh, uh, very advanced tools that it offers. It's a powerhouse of color conversion. Ooh. Wow. Let me redo this uh, presentation. I'll be right back. <laughs> Just add that. Uh, so Colorbox is for onset looks and LUT management. And again, we're going to talk a lot about that for live production. HDR conversions as well, and supports up to 4K, Ultra HD, and HD workflows, all the way up to 12-bit 444. Um, so let's take a look at it a little bit, start to familiarize ourselves with it. So that's the front and back. So on the front, uh, you have a USB on-the-go connector, which we'll talk about in a little bit. As, and on the back, you have um, 12G SDI in and out, a loop out, and HDMI 2.0 output a LAN port and a locking power connector. And the locking power connector is really nice for production environments. Absolutely, you want to make sure that you've got, you know, two things about that power connector. One, it's uh, DC, mm -hmm. so for people that are running on DIT carts uh, who want to have DC power, battery power, they can do that. Also, because it's a latching connector, it's got a nice positive retention mechanism. Mm -hmm. So if you're bouncing around in different environments, it's not going to come unplugged. And that's a standard connector that's found across production Yeah, it's production a four sets, pin, right? yeah, mini XLR. People are very familiar with it. So you don't have to necessarily use the AC adapter that came with it. Like you said, you can run off batteries, you can run off other power supplies you have as long as they are rated to yeah. handle Yeah, and it supports a wide range of uh, DC inputs, you know, from 10 to 18 volts. So 
yeah, should work in a lot of different places. And another key thing to highlight there, and I think you touched on, is the 12-bit mm -hmm. RGB 444 support all the way up to 4K 30p. Mm -hmm. So pretty powerful there for a lot of different people who need the most precise kind of color conversions. And that's carried over one cable because it's 12G SDI. You got that right. And then because of it's 12G SDI, we can also do up to uh, uh, 4K 60p as 422 10-bit, mm -hmm. right? Absolutely. You know, so really powerful stuff going on in this box. Um, let's talk a little bit about that LAN port. Um, there is a built-in web server um, that you can connect to either on the LAN or the USB connector. Um, and it serves up this very rich UI directly from the color box to any standard web browser. And this is, for those of you that use maybe Key Pro or Hilo or FS products from us, or Kumos, you're familiar with this already that AJA products tend to have this uh, a very easy to use but powerful uh, interface that is served up directly to web clients. And maybe you can talk a little bit about the interface. I'll zoom in a little bit on. Yeah, sure. You know, we worked really hard to make the user inter interface, you know, consistent with other AJA products, as you mentioned. So it should have an immediate familiarity mm -hmm. about it with how you navigate around. Uh, but something unique that we've done here is we've added this uh, kind of node-based kind of processing pipeline, oh. as we're calling it, um, into the user interface, which is very easy to navigate. From left to right, you see a blue line, which indicates you know, the source coming in, going across the different nodes. And if the node changes a color, it means that it's being part of the hmm. signal processing path. Which is a simple toggle on and off for each node, right? Simple toggle on and off from each node, um, very user-friendly. Uh, so we spent a lot of time trying to make this, you know, super accessible and, like I said, user friendly. Yeah, and, and the times I've used it, it's been really easy to use, and I'm far from a production professional, <laughs> um, so it's uh, it's really nicely done. Yes, thank you. Yeah, the feedback that we've had on it from our beta testers has been pretty amazing. Fantastic. Well, let's talk a little bit more about the sort of the heart of the box, which is the integrated color processing. And it comes with a range of color processing <coughs> pipelines, as we're calling them. Um, and you select each one depending upon what the need is. So there's five processing pipelines that we're going to talk about each one a little bit. But AJA Color Pipeline um, are working again with our very good friends at Colorfront. Uh, we've integrated the NBCU LUTs. Uh, and there are two options, the BBC HLG LUTs, and then a, a new solution from our friends at Chromarama called Orion Convert. So let's first talk about the AJA color pipeline. Maybe you can tell us a little bit about what that is. Yeah, so this is a pretty powerful tool here. This is kind of your LUT mode, if you will, for the mm -hmm. product. And it's all built around a 33-point 3D LUT processor right in the middle of it. Mm -hmm. uh, has tetrahedral interpolation, so the best kind of uh, LUT that you can get in a hardware product today. Uh, surrounding that, it's actually got additional four 1D LUTs and two 3x3 matrices. Wow. And this gives you full control over the color processing path to get the highest precision um, conversion possible out mm -hmm. of your pipeline. So the 3D LUT is in there. You can load it with user LUTs. The 1D LUTs can be loaded with user LUTs. The 3x3s can these be... these are just standard LUT files that people are already using in other parts of the production chain? Absolutely, yeah. Just based standard LUT files, nothing proprietary there in terms of file format. Mm -hmm. Um, and then the 3D LUT that's in the middle uh, is also, well, all the LUTs can be, but the 3D LUT primarily can be controlled dynamically, similar like what we do in the FSHDR oh, where third parties can control it and manipulate a look mm -hmm. and have that downloaded in real time to the color box and have it output over its 12G SDI and HDMI 2.0 connectors. Super cool. And what's the bypass node? for the baseband signals. Yeah, exactly. So the, the bypass node allows you to uh, quickly turn everything off essentially in the pipeline mm -hmm. so you can really just look at the source being bypassed all the way directly to the output. Oh, interesting. And you can toggle it on and off and back and forth so you can quickly AB your look against the original source material. Wow, just on one monitor. So it's bypassing the processing, not bypassing the video outputs. Per se. Correct, yeah, just bypassing the processing. Wow, that's pretty powerful stuff. So the next one is a great uh, integration, again, with our friends at Colorfront, who we've done multiple projects with, including FSHDR and HDR Image Analyzer and others. Maybe you can talk about how they integrate with Colorbox. Yeah, so we've uh, been able to integrate parts of the Colorfront engine um, into the Colorbox. So it comes built in with 
uh, six different transforms that are designed for broadcast workflows that allow you to convert between SDR, HLG, and PQ. Mm -hmm. And as Colorfront, you know, with their color science, they do a great job of optimizing the transforms for maintaining the perceptual integrity mm -hmm. um, of the material. And so that, that comes freely built in with the, with the product. And what does it mean when you when overlay is available on the output? How does that pertain to? Yeah, we've got this noted on each one of the pipelines, and we'll talk about it a little bit more later. Oh, okay. But the the overlay allows you to overlay different uh, bits of information onto the the image itself. Okay, cool. Well, then I'll be patient. <laughs> uh, next up is the NBC ULETs, which I've heard of before, but maybe you can talk a little bit about. Sure, yeah. NBC Universal developed these LUTs in collaboration with uh, the guys at Chromarama, mm. and, uh, and they were developed specifically for live sports television productions mm -hmm. uh, for people who are doing single stream or single master HDR workflows okay. to be able to convert SDR sources into HLG for the production switcher and then convert to different deliverables on the output. And these are freely available LUTs, but we've included them in Colorbox because they are so widely used. Mm -hmm. And by including them in here, we're actually able to take care of some of the um, setup aspects of the LUT processor configuration automatically. So it ensures that, you know, at the push of a button, everything's set up correctly for the given transform. It also has uh, a proc amp and RGB color corrector in front of the, the transform. So it allows you to color correct the source before it goes into the LUT. Wow. So before we talk about the remaining color processing modes, what was your thought process with including all of these uh, uh, partner technological solutions in the box instead of just offering the AJA? Yeah, well, pipeline? you know, this, uh, this product has been designed to support lots of different applications. So mm -hmm. whether it's gonna be your onset workflows and look management, mm -hmm. all the way through to, you know, your live sports productions at the highest level. Mm -hmm. So being able to support 4K onset is kind of a new and happening thing, 4K and HDR. Mm -hmm. And we know that, you know, a lot of broadcasters are doing HD, HDR stuff now, but wanting to push into 4K. And so we want to be able to make sure that we had a, uh, a box that would support all these different workflows and so therefore partnering with different companies to develop these pipelines or integrate them into the color box is pretty key. Yeah, part instead of, our of creating definition. something proprietary and that's what I've always loved about AJ is we tend to really partner heavily with other companies when we create products and I think that just fits into customers workflows better because they don't have to change the way that they're working. They just mm -hmm. add a problem solver in to an established workflow already. Yep, and we've done that right out of the gate. Awesome. Let's talk about the next one, which is the BBC HLG LUTs. Yeah, so again, these are another widely used uh, HLG LUT package mm -hmm. uh, used in the industry for live sports productions. We've included these LUTs in our FSHDR and had great success with that. We wanted to make it an option in our Colorbox product as well. Mm -hmm. um, it has a very similar pipeline to the NBCU LUTs with a color corrector, RGB color corrector, and proc amp in front of the LUT processor. Um, and this is one of our first licensable options that's mm -hmm. in the color box. So uh, we want people to be able to, you know, assess the technology, the color science, and, uh, and then only buy it if they really need it rather than having that cost built into the product. So, so it's, it's in the box and you're able to utilize the full functionality, just the output, it has a watermark on it. Yeah, the output has a watermark on it. Until you license it if you want to, if it helps your... Yeah, if you buy production, it. <laughs> and then yeah. exactly. Yeah, if you find that it's what you want, then you buy the license and in, install it into the product, and the watermark gets removed, and you're good to go. Cool. It is a perpetual license for all the licensable options oh, in the box. So buy it once, and you're good for the lifetime. Excellent. And then Orion Convert is it from our friends at Chromarama. Yes, so uh, Orion Convert. This is really exciting. This is kind of our f the first time the industry's seen this pipeline available. Oh, really? And uh, so the Orion Convert algorithm was actually used to develop the LUTs for lots of different high-end productions, including the NBCU LUTs. Mm -hmm. um, but the, the color science has been used to develop LUTs that were used for high-end live production broadcasts that I probably shouldn't name on the video. But uh, you can imagine what they might be. Uh, but what's really unique about this uh, color pipeline is is a couple of things. The first thing is, instead of using the 33-point 3D LUT processor, which is amazing, mm -hmm. we're using floating point math to do the transforms. Okay. And what that means is that you're going to get less interpolation errors, hmm. gaining access to what I call the color between the colors. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So you should that, be in marketing, not product <laughs> management. What's going on? So that's that's one thing. The next thing is is <clears throat> that it has a unique 
two-stage knee adjustment. Mm -hmm. So imagine you're doing an HLG to SDR down conversion. <clears throat> you can apply a pre-compression in the HLG domain, mm -hmm. go through the transform into SDR, and then have another knee adjustment to be able to fine tune it when you're in SDR. So really lots of granular control then. To get the perfect transform for your production. And the beauty of all of these pipelines is once you have a look that you like, you can save it as a preset, export it, and send it to other color boxes uh, so that same, those same settings can be reproduced. And so that then speaks to the LUT library. Yeah, so it's, uh, it's beyond a LUT library. It's really a full library of all the different files that are on the product mm. uh, that it can manage. Okay. So the 1D LUTs, are, there's 16 of those that can be loaded onto the product. The 3x3 matrices, there's 16 of those, 16 3D wow. uh, LUTs. Um, and, and those also, are stored in, in, uh, in the box, so even if it's powered down, you don't have to reprogram those modes? Yeah, so it's a non-volatile memory. Okay. So the last thing that's in the library, though, is the 16 images that mm -hmm. can be captured into our frame store or uh, loaded from your computer into the frame store. Okay. So a large image library as well. Very cool. So I know the box, you've thought a lot about the, the ANTS support with it, and I know that's so important to production, modern productions, visual effects productions, in particular with lens data or positioning data, and of course, you know, closed captioning and time code and the stuff we're used to, but maybe you can talk a little bit about the capabilities of Colorbox. Yeah, so uh, we're able to do a few different things with uh, managing ancillary data. The first and foremost is is we pass everything through. Mm -hmm. So if it comes in on the SDI spigot, we're passing it through. Okay. So that comes with the camera and lens metadata that's so important for your onset type things. Mm -hmm. um, and then also embedded audio passes through it and time oh, okay. code and closed captioning as you mentioned. So um, everything passes through and uh, even for third parties who are wanting to integrate and control our product, they mm -hmm. can gain access to ancillary data over over Ethernet, so we can send, extract, mm -hmm. and extend that inf uh, send that information over Ethernet. Interesting. And then another uh, really neat thing, which we highlight here, is the ability to overlay information on top of the image. Mm -hmm. So some of it's um, ancillary data. Some of that information is other user text information. So mm -hmm. think about an onset application where uh, you'd like to put a label on. Uh, the display. Sometimes people use masking tape now instead of, sure. you can throw that tape roll away now <laughs> and just use this user text field mm -hmm. and be able to put on this is the camera, this is the lens, or this is the filter, or you know maybe if you're in a live production you might put the name of the camera operator on there and be able to take it off, but it's a really useful tool for, for so many different reasons. Another cool thing in that overlay is if you've got a pipeline set up that you like and you want to you know, really capture what the color box is doing, you can overlay the pipeline configuration, mm -hmm. which will tell you what files are loaded into each one of the nodes in the AJA color pipeline. And it'll tell you if you've got a color corrector on and what LUT you're using in the other modes. And then you can store that image in the box, right? And you can capture that image. It. Yeah, you can capture that image, custom label it, export it, email it to somebody so they can have access to it wow. with that overlay information on top of it. And so e even all of these, uh, uh, setup modes you can share amongst color boxes with a, a file, right? You can import and export these setups and even just share them over email with people. So not just the screen caps, but the whole setup of the box. That's correct. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. we'll talk about the presets here in a minute, I think. Okay. That's me jumping the gun as usual. <laughs> So the, the frame store is really what you're speaking to? Yeah, the frame store. So it's got a built-in frame store, which uh, does a couple of different things, and it's really a, a powerful tool. So mm -hmm. uh, first thing, as a frame store, it can capture images. Mm -hmm. But not only does it just capture images, it can capture up to 4K Ultra HD HDR images. Mm -hmm. So there's no other kind of product like this on the market that can do that. And it'll capture them as TIFF files, and I, I think I read it, with, they're even 16-bit, right, TIFF right. files, so you get the full color range in the TIFF file. And a lot of the ancillary information that's available mm -hmm. um, as well. So yeah, we capture up to 16-bit TIFFs, full resolution, 4K, wow. Ultra HD, um, as well as we can, like I said earlier, capture 16 of those if we wanted to. Mm -hmm. And not only were we capturing TIFFs, but if you wanted something that was lower res like a PNG or a JPEG, we mm -hmm. can capture that as well. Um, and then those can be exported and imported in other devices or sent further down the, the pipeline to the next person in the chain so they can see what you're uh, doing on set or in your live production. 
The other thing that's important about the frame store is it has a built-in test pattern generator. Mm -hmm. So the test pattern generator's got nine different test patterns that are built into it. So even without a source applied to the product, you can output a test signal that can go to downstream devices. Super and, helpful in any environment. Yeah, and you can actually select what the output format is. Mm -hmm. So all the way from your HD and low frame rate to 4K or Ultra HD at high frame rate and have it output a test pattern just like this one you're seeing here. Super cool. Just the, the functionality of this box just keeps going and going and going. So here's the presets that I jumped the gun on. Maybe you want to talk a little <laughs> bit about that. Yeah, so you know, we understand there's a lot going on in the product, mm -hmm. and you want to be able to not only just set up this one product, but hand off the setup to other people so they can have the same exact you know, transform setup in theirs. So mm -hmm. um, each one of our pipelines, as we've called them, can have 10 stored presets each. Oh, wow. So that's a total of 50 presets per box, mm -hmm. which is a lot. Um, but those presets are the things that enable you, like I said, to be able to save it, export it, import it in another box, and get that same look. And with the AJA color pipeline, it's a little bit more challenging because you may have 1D LUTs, 3x3 HCs, and a 3D LUT associated with it, and those are all files. So in the pipeline preset for AJA color pipeline, we actually store all of those files along with that preset. Oh wow! So when it's imported into another box, those files are automatically imported into the library in the appropriate spots, so that preset can be recalled. And it's just a file, so you could share it across. You can email it or email it or yeah, airdrop it or whatever you want to do. Yeah, and another cool thing about this is we've talked about some of the well, we'll talk about the third-party integrations, but as it relates to the dynamic LUTs. Mm -hmm. um, if somebody's controlling a dynamic LUT and making adjustments to it, and you want to save that as part of your preset, we can actually store the values of that 3D LUT that was created from that third-party device and have that be part of the preset that's saved and wow. exported. I actually didn't know that until just now, so that's pretty awesome. <laughs> and all of this processing is with what I think is really impressive low latency, um, uh, just half a video line. And maybe you can talk about why why so much effort was went into the hardware engineering to achieve that. Yeah, so uh, maintaining low latency is important in any application. Sure. Live has to be live, and live is only live once, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, so maintaining lip sync is pretty critical. Mm -hmm. So you don't want to have uh, the video out of sync with the lips that are moving on the screen. Sure. Um, and also for a live production environment, if you're wanting to um, do a color conversion and have it go to a production switcher, um, the production switchers have usually a, a timing window of plus or minus half a line on their okay. inputs and in, a line buffer. And so we wanted to make sure when we receive a signal and output it, we're processing in a short enough time to be able to meet that timing requirement. So Got we're not it. introducing any extra frames of delay. Okay. But I mean, think beyond just live production, think about live events or image magnification, IMAG, you know, in, in houses of worship and churches and that type of thing, or even LED volumes or in-camera VFX, you know, people are, are clamoring for something that's low latency like this that can mm -hmm. do the processing that we're doing. It's really impressive I'm, just how much thought has gone into this box. So you mentioned the dynamic LUTs before, and this is a feature that we introduced on FSHDR, which allows partner companies to um, trigger certain functions on the box from their software. And in Colorbox, maybe you can talk about how that would work with uh, two partners that we have right out of the gate, the first being Pomfort. Yeah, so Pomfort, they've been a strong partner throughout this integration, mm -hmm. uh, helping us along the way in so many different ways. But yeah. uh, yes, they've uh, developed an integration to be able to control that 3D LUT mm -hmm. dynamically. So within Live Grade, you can have, you know, you can set up your, your show LUT and then have a CDL, which is a color decision list, mm -hmm. be able to make changes to that in real time and have those changes downloaded into our 3D LUT and have our box, the color box, output that video in, in real time. Uh, something unique that we do is actually a full frame LUT processing. Mm -hmm. So there's some other products that can sometimes do partial frame processing. So you might get mm -hmm. some color change on part of the video and not on the other. Uh, we've eliminated that issue with Colorbox. That doesn't sound very helpful. I'm glad <laughs> we did that. Yeah. The second partner with the dynamic LUT support is our friends at Assimilate. 
Yes, so uh, just finishing up with Palm Ford, it's sure. LiveGrade Pro and LiveGrade Studio that'll mm -hmm. be supporting this on day one at product launch. Integration's ready to go. Super exciting. Yep. Um, Assimilate, uh, we've also worked with them early on. Uh, they wanted to be a part of the, the product and, and controlling the dynamic LUT as well, mm -hmm. 3D LUT. And so uh, their Assimilate Live Looks and Live Assist will also be able to control the color box at launch. That's great. Yeah, and we have a little just close-up look at the UI and Palmfort software where you can see the color box is one of the device choices right there. Um, uh, along with the established FSHDR integration. So, that's right. Um, yeah, that this is going to be available right at launch is really exciting. We also have other partner um, integrations with uh, configuration and control partners, the first being our good friends at Scarhoy. Yeah, it's uh, always great to work with Scar Scarhoy. We've worked with them on FSHDR control integration of the yeah. RGB color corrector and when we approached them and said, hey, we've got a new color corrector device or color management tool, uh, they were on board from the, from the get-go. Mm -hmm. And so they've uh, developed a control integration that is extremely tight, controlling lots of different aspects of the product, including being able to control multiple color boxes at the same time, mm -hmm. which is a key requirement for broadcast. If they want to sure. adjust the red value on multiple color boxes at one time, they can certainly do that. Wow. Uh, so gang control works, and it's just an amazing integration. And, Casper's done some some great marketing, so mm -hmm. hopefully we'll see some of that rolling out with our launcher shortly awesome. after. Yeah, they're great to work with. That integration will be available at the time of launch as well. Fantastic. All of these and well. then Scion View as well? Yeah, working with David over at uh, Scion View. He's mm -hmm. also is really keen on being able to control this box. It dovetails really well into his workflows for, for broadcast and awesome. color correcting cameras that don't necessarily have uh, color correction controls in them. Mm -hmm. uh, so he was really anxious to, to gain control of Colorbox and that integration is there and will be shown at IBC and is ready to go at launch. Awesome. Yeah, all these partner integrations, I think, just add so much value to the product and really exciting stuff. Next up is the thermal design of the box, I think, is really impressive. It has this very advanced thermal design, and which results in this very ultra-quiet operation. And maybe you could talk about why that's important. I mean, it's obvious, <coughs> but maybe there's some extra things that I don't know about, about why that's so critical for certain environments. Yeah, I mean, if you're on set, and it's, it is quiet on the set, just as the slide says, yeah. you know, and so anything that's creating noise, you got to have it be kept to a minimum, and if there's any astute viewers out there, they probably saw some of the ventilation holes on the front of the product, and there is active cooling in it, but we've done such a, uh, we put a lot of effort into making sure that it was quiet, mm -hmm. and uh, so far with the beta testers that we've done and on set, um, Workflows where they, it needs to be quiet. Mm -hmm. They've said it's it's a non-issue. Fantastic. So, yes. And the thermal design also is that you're pulling cool air in the front and venting the warm air out the back, which is sort of the standard. But we've seen a number of our competitors that don't do it that way. Where they might be cooling side to side, which in a rack environment means you're pulling in cool air and heating it up and heating it up, and then the last box is really sucking in some pretty warm air there. So yes. Yeah. Maybe you could talk about why you. Yeah, made that a requirement. It's a great point. So, you know, in uh, whether it's, you know, in a fixed facility, they typically have their rack rooms, equipment rooms with a cold air channel in the front. Mm -hmm. And that's where you want to draw air in to cool off the product. Sure. And then you want to have the warm air out the back where then they can exhaust it out of the facility. So, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, we were careful in how we designed this to make sure that we are managing our airflow appropriately to mm -hmm. fit in those in those applications. So um, in doing so, we didn't need to blow a whole lot of air across the, the FPGA inside to keep it cool. So that's also why we've been able to maintain it. Uh, it's low noise Excellent. as well. Excellent. And it's really, all of this is in an extremely compact form factor. It's just seven and a half inches by a little over four inches. And it's so lightweight, just, uh, just about a pound. And that results in it being able to be used in multiple environments, like here we're showing it on a desktop. We're going to talk a little bit about the post-production uh, uh, aspect of the use of it. Mm -hmm. And then also being able to use it in a rack, uh, uh, being able to get four in one RU. Yeah, uh, so density, you know, is mm -hmm. kind of king. So, uh, you know, we try to make, from the get-go, we knew we wanted to have four of these or as many channels as we could in one rack unit. And so we were able to get four of them in, in one RU, which I think is great. Um, being able to have four, you know, 4K Ultra HD color processors in one rack unit is some pretty good density. 
and the lightweight, you know, it just being one pound, it's not a whole lot of weight to add to your kit where every ounce kit counts in a mobile, whether it's flight Absolutely. pack or a truck um, or on your DIT cart, we kept the weight to a minimum. Yeah, so not just the density, but the weight, like you said, is just so important in mobile trucks, fly packs, DIT carts, really anywhere, of course. You know, rack space is always at a premium, so getting four powerful processing channels up to, you know, 4K, 444 is pretty impressive stuff. Mm -hmm. So who is Colorbox for? Um, so we've kind of gone over a number of the features, but let's talk about how it might be used in different environments. So there's sort of three uh, environments that we chose as a sample, live production HDR transforms, onset looks and color grading, and then post-production look management. So let's take a look at each one of those and maybe you can talk a little bit about it. So the first being live production HDR transforms. So how, how would Colorbox fit in that environment? It uh, fits in really well, you know, because of the breadth of pipelines that we offer, it gives people a lot of choice in how they do their color conversion and mm -hmm. where they may need that color conversion is color converting SDR sources into their HDR production format. Mm -hmm. So it could be specialty cameras, it could be a graphics machine, it could be a replay machine. Um, it could even be a camera that's outputting log for some of the shallow depth of field mm -hmm. looks, you know, they're using cinema cameras in live uh, these days. And the color box can convert all of those different signals into the production format of HLG typically for live mm -hmm. production. Mm -hmm. And not only will it work there, but also on the output of the production switcher where, you know, there's multiple deliverables that are required. You sure. got to deliver PQ, you know, you may need to down convert it to SDR for the current larger view, viewer, viewer audience. And mm -hmm. uh, so those conversions can all happen with color box. And uh, yeah, so here, here's a look at multiple delivery formats using Colorbox with a mix of source cameras, log, SDR, converting them to various types of um, uh, HDR formats that the video switcher can understand and then outputting different delivery formats as well using Colorbox. Absolutely, yeah, that's the intent. Very cool. So the next use would be onset color grading. Um, and I know this is you know, one, of the, one of the main targets of the the products, maybe you can talk about how that would integrate with uh, on an onset environment. Yeah, so you know, people are pushing more and more for 4K or HDR workflows on set. They don't have to be synonymous, it could be either or. Mm -hmm. And with the integrations that we've done with uh, Palm Fort and Assimilate, mm -hmm. uh, being able to control the their looks and manage their looks and help create their looks or refine their looks on set this is gonna enable them to do that for their 4K Ultra HD, you know, critical onset monitoring, um, as well as for, you know, conversion into HDR to make sure that their look is correct. And it'll be seamless for the, the user because of the dynamic LUT feature using those two software packages, right? Yeah, it's, uh, it's all real time coming into the box, processed and out of the box. So um, very seamless for the DIT to work with the director of photography to make sure that their, uh, the look is correct. Mm -hmm. And again, the preset management, being able to save that look and export it to be used maybe on another LUT box mm -hmm. that's in production mm -hmm. or even sent further down the production chain to the next person in line. Very helpful. Cool. Can, and can you talk about this diagram a little bit? Yeah, so this is a very simple diagram of what an onset SDR, HDR workflow could be. Mm -hmm. uh, until people are comfortable with, you know, doing a production in HDR, they still want to be able to see what their SDR is going to look like. Sure. So. They may have one camera coming in and then use two color boxes, one to convert the log to HDR and mm -hmm. another one to convert the log to SDR, mm -hmm. all with their you know, show, show LUT plus CDL. Uh, and then they can look at it on either two different monitors or it could be one monitor that's got a uh, setting that you can quickly change to look at both. Mm -hmm. Or you could use the bypass feature, right? To... Well, the bypass would allow you to look at the, the source without any processing, so that may be log coming in, uh, which you know, this is why I don't design products. <laughs> yeah, which may be helpful in some cases, but you know, being able to look at your SDR and your HDR to understand, you know, the manipulations that you're making on set, how mm -hmm. it's going to translate into what could be the final product, mm -hmm. really helps people make those critical decisions on set, mm -hmm. rather than waiting later in a post and finding out that it didn't work and have to bring everybody back on set to do a reshoot, which is bad. Which is bad That's and bad. costly. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So the other use is in post-production. Maybe you can talk a little bit about, I, I think we have a couple of examples here. Yeah, so the first one, I guess I kind of, you know, 
keyed in on earlier, and that is, you know, once you've created your look on set, very easy, either using the third-party software integrations that we have, mm -hmm. or if you don't have that and you just want to export a preset and send it to somebody further down the line who's got a color box, you can just email them that preset and then they can see exactly what you're seeing on set. So it helps for information sharing, uh, getting from on set to the colorist and to the editors. So if the colorist is using like Resolve or Filmlight or any of the popular color correction packages, you can be sent the file and they can preview it or uh, take a look at what that is just in real time with a color box. Right, as they're making their own decisions within their color mm -hmm. grading software. That's so cool. So I think this is a different example. Yeah, well, building on that, you know, if you are a colorist and you are wanting to audition different looks, mm -hmm. the idea here being that rather than having to render out, you know, in these different targeted formats mm -hmm. with, the, your, um, with your looks applied, you could simply export that LUT, import it into Colorbox, and play your clip right through it. Wow. And then you can bypass the whole rendering out, so it's very quick to audition mm -hmm. new looks uh, to different people. And that would be helpful also for screening rooms, because you could create a look, email it over to the screening room, they load it into the color box that's connected up to the projector. Yeah, and because we support you know 12-bit RGB workflows, mm -hmm. um, people are really keen in on that aspect of it because uh, they can get the highest precision in that transform possible for these critical screening rooms. Mm -hmm. So really, it can just be used in so many different production environments, and I, I think we probably could have had 50 examples here. <laughs> I think we did, and then we trimmed it down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. How much time you guys got? <laughs> Great. Well, the color box I just think is so exciting, and again, it's the partner integrations. You know, beyond the, the just the fantastic feature set, it's the, these partner integrations and the way that you've architected the box and worked with clients around the world to define it and then build the product that they want. I, I'm so excited about this. Yeah, the integrations that we've done are key to the success of this product. Mm -hmm. And so it was really important to have those things up front in a phase one introduction of the product. And I'd like to, you know, thank all the partners, Absolutely. you know, in working with us to make this uh, happen and, and delivering it all on the same day. It's yeah. pretty impressive. Very exciting stuff. And really, just an incredible price for this box. It's just under $2,000 US, and that includes our three-year warranty and tech support and also a, a very robust 12-volt power supply. And the options, the Orion Convert option and the BBC HLG LUT option are just amazingly priced as well, just a few hundred bucks. And the AJA Color, the Color Front and the NVC LUT modes are included in the box. Yeah. Um, and so the, as you said earlier, the Orion Convert and the BBC HLG LUTs, you can still play with them and use them and output. They're just going to have a watermark, and you know, unless it, you want to license them until you license them. Is removed. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So there's a lot that comes included in the box. Get people up and going and, and playing with it, and then yeah, license uh, license as needed. Awesome, super exciting. And so Colorbox just really adds to what I believe is just the, the industry best set of management tools for HDR and color workflows from. You know, our processing boxes like the new color box and FSHDR to our I.O. devices that support uh, so many different uh, uh, software solutions and support H, uh, HDR formats, uh, mini converters. Uh, we're able to record it with Key Pro. We're able to analyze it with the HDR image analyzer with such great secret sauce from Colorfront and deliver it uh, with, pro with tools like the Bridge Live, our streaming and uh, uh, backhaul solution. Absolutely, it's a powerful portfolio of HDR and color management, and I think the color box dovetails nicely in with FSHDR. FSHDR is amazing and has mm -hmm. so much processing capabilities uh, that color box doesn't have. You mm -hmm. know, it has up-down cross-conversion, yeah. uh, for example, in the frame synchronization, you know, with all the adjustments for delay of video and audio, mm -hmm. which are all powerful tools. Color box dovetails in nicely right next to it. Yeah, that's great. So so well thought out. And I think one thing we wanted to say on one of those previous slides was color box is available now. It is available now. So go and get it. Yeah. Uh, and so we're going to be at IBC. We're going to be showing color box. We're going to be showing our all of our uh, uh, products and color box. You'll be able to. Tim will be there if you have uh, any technical questions, he's your guy. Uh, we have lots of really good people there. We're excited to be back at a major trade show again in a meaningful way with a booth and stuff. So really looking forward to this IBC. We're in Hall 7 as we usually are, so we should be easy to find. And 
for our channel partners, we have new tools for you to sell uh, Colorbox. We have uh, a new marketing campaign that will start up with web banner ads and new print ads and uh, lots going on behind the scenes that way as well. Really beautiful stuff that sort of leverages the, the you know, color message of the, the product. And right now our website is live with our new Colorbox uh, product page and just tons of really good information there and uh, building on a lot of the good stuff that Tim has talked about. So definitely check it out on AJA.com and learn more about Colorbox. A lot more details there. Good. Yes. That's great. And as always, please follow us on social media where we tend to be very active about news and especially from IBC if there's exciting stuff to share that we didn't talk about today, we will uh, uh, have it on our website and also on these popular social media channels. So really, thank you, Tim, for your time. Thanks to everyone for tuning in, and we'll see whoever is there in Amsterdam. Looking forward to it. And for everyone else, thank you for your time, and uh, we'll talk to you soon. Thank you.